put it on. Had to put it on. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You want to join this call again? Oh, yeah, man. Heck yeah. Hey, all right. Baseball call. Yo. Here's some stuff more. What up, love? And how, come you can't, how come you can't see my picture? Hey, Matt, just turn your camera on, Matt. Just... Oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Are you Start on your video? phone? Start video? How about that? Okay, there. How's yeah. that? Oh, there he is. All right, turn it back off. All right, yeah. Turn it back <laughs> off? Really? <laughs> really? You're going to do me like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, Leanne, good to see you, man. What up, Wolves? Good to see you guys. Right on, bro. <laughs> I like the hair, Rob. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to grow it out. I'm just lazy. <laughs> Rob, a few more years, you might end up like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, Mark's supposed to be on that too. Mark? Yeah. And, um, Oh, we got a little party going on. Okay. Heck yeah, bro. This is it, man. We got Chris, Chris in the house. Anthony on the tema. Joe Arredondo. Hey, look at hey, you guys. Up? Look at you. I see you working. <laughs> what up, Joe? Hey, you're on mute. You're on mute, Joe. I'll, I'll mute your phone, Joe. What's up, Uzos? Yay. What's up? Oh, <laughs> Where you at these days, Chris? Okay, I'm in North Carolina. All oh, right, right. Damn. Right, right, right. Ah, wow, there's a ton of people down there on the island. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Who's on? Oh. Wow, I see. We lost we lost Joe. Uh, I think it was having some uh Technical difficulties. <laughs> so, that, that's what you get when you go to Clemson. So we have. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, wait. Did you go to Clemson or Auburn? Uh, you went Auburn. to Auburn. Auburn. Yeah, that's what happens when you go to Auburn. You get dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> I see somebody named their phone uh, Daddy's Phone. That's Joe. That's Joe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, hey, Daddy, you might as well step out because we're just all over you right now. You're still muted, Joe. You're still muted. <laughs> Yeah, Hi, everybody. Hey, Joe, hey, you different in Alabama. Yeah, we got Charlie in the house. So, you uh, still Charlie. Really Charlie, you still in Tennessee? I I am just for another week uh, before I uh, uh, head on north to the nice. swamp over in D.C., man. There you go. Yeah. Oh, you know, That's good. Army Corps of Engineers are going to build that wall around the Capitol. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, you hmm? need to get a laptop. Can I ask you? Can you grab mine? It's, it's by my Yo. computer. It's that bag. That's my uh, surface. What's up, Ted? Hey, how you doing, Sally? What's up, brother? What's going on? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, man. Good to see you, too, man. I didn't hey, you recognize the guy behind me? Wait. Middle infield. <laughs> yeah. On a Timo. Is that Anthony? Yep. yep. Hey, hey, what's up, brother? Bubbles. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good Come on, that, with Joe. Okay, there you is go. That, that, is that Ted Get Power right there? <laughs> One and only, Joe. I ain't seen Ted Get Power in about 37 years. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you might want to uh, dye that beard of yours, bro. Hey, hey, hey. Tell it. Stand up, Ted. Let me see you. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't want me to stand. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna try to. So is that is it? Let me see that big old tattoo on your arm. How big is that now? Oh uh, man, it's big. It's it's huge. <laughs> Last time I saw you, Ted, we was going fishing with a fiance down there at Tula or something. I know those are the good old days. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, no, it's the small man. It's, it's like we got a little... Francis Pony in the house. Yeah. Everybody, please. <laughs> yeah. my little pony. Is that, is that Francis? Francis? Hey, Francis, you should be connecting right now. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Francis Pony. <laughs> I think we've got everybody for now. Um, Murph is gonna jump on a little later, uh, probably much, much later. But I know some of you uh, super last minute, so um, I know some of you might need to take off. <clears throat> so what we'll do is uh, we'll do a quick introduction uh, of our guest, our special guest, and, and just in case uh, the people in Samoa. My name is Rob. And I grew up in Fangalu, right behind the, the hospital. Uh, and just a little background on everybody else that's here for you guys in Samoa. We all play, we're all Samoa number one, uh, but we all play baseball too. Uh, and baseball was our vehicle to the next level um, to help us you know, live our best lives right now. And what we wanna do is uh, make sure that you guys are aware <laughs> that there's people that grew up where you came from that played on the same field that you play on right now that's doing really well just in life in general. Um, and, and we asked them to ju jump on just to say hello to you guys because we're gonna be doing this more often, but uh, more so um, building this thing for a much larger you know, um, uh, purpose. So with that being said, I think who needs to take off early? Like Joe, you've got the kids, the baseball going on right now, the whole travel team. Do you need to take off early? Um, or are I'm you, here. You're here? All right. Are you good, Francis? You're good to go, Saleh? Yeah, yeah. I'm Chris good for now. Here, he's making some millions flipping houses. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're good to go, um, I would love to have uh, Pai. If you're okay, Pi, can she hear us? Actually, let's do um let let's do uh, is Pi there or no? Huh? Or who where where who, where's Paul? Where's Paul? Is Paul here? Paul's on mute. Paul, you're on mute. Paul, you're on mute, bro. Yes, I'm here. All right, hey, Paul, can you can you get us started, man? Say a prayer for us, real fast, bro. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Bless you. Wash all us as we go through this meeting, Father. Yes, we give us the wisdom and knowledge. We make the right choices for the many opportunities you've blessed us with. I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Saleh, how do you think we should kind of uh, go through our lineup in terms of introduction? Should we start from the elder statesman and then work our way down? That, that might be the most <laughs> equitable approach, yeah? Uh, that sounds good, man. I mean, however you run the show, man, it, it, that sounds good. Okay, and just so you guys know, uh, you know, from you guys in Samoa, the people that are on this call that are going to introduce themselves, literally, they're the best of the best from the island and in blood. Like, as Polynesians, these players have done incredible stuff in the sport that translated into life and now into their families. So it really is an honor for us to have these guys on a call to talk to you specifically, right? So... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the elder statesman here from Texas, uh, Mathis Huff. This guy's got an incredible story. Been there, done that. Uh, he's, yeah, yeah. I'll let him kind of do, do the, his introduction, but we're definitely honored to have him on the call with us. Well, yes, uh, it is an honor to be here with everybody. And, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this great event uh, yeah, I'm here in Texas, uh, 
I'm actually my my uh, I was born in American Samoa and I lived there till I was five, and then uh, my my mother uh, our house is in Baloa, and all you students that are there, you probably know my sister, which is Atalina Coffin, and uh, also my sister Bobby Bobby uh, Lawson Huff. He was a director at the uh, airport. Uh, so those of you that are there now, uh, my sister Lena is still living there with her husband, Gordon. And, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, my story is uh, kind of lengthy, but I'll keep it real short. So I was fortunate that uh, I was introduced to the great game of baseball at an early age. And uh, I played growing up through the little league systems and the senior league systems. Uh, I played through high school. Uh, I'm fortunate, you know, I'm six foot six. Uh, I graduated high school at 225 pounds. I could run, I could hit. And I was fortunate that I got to go play in college. Uh, I played four years in college, division one. Uh, and then I was fortunate from there, I proceeded to play six years of professional baseball, three in the United States. Uh, mainland. And then I also played three years over in the uh, island of Taiwan. So I did some Asian travel while I was over there, but all of it through baseball. And uh, one thing that I can say that not many people that you're going to talk to, I've played baseball on every continent except Antarctica. So I've been through Africa. I've been through Asia. I've been through Europe. I've been to Australia, uh, all of which I played international baseball. And so I love the sport. I support the sport. I coached high school baseball for 15 years. Uh, as a side job, I volunteered my time. Uh, it was my way of paying back to the community of baseball. And uh, I really wish you guys the best in your division of going out there and trying to do what you can in the sport, because you're all going to be part of the, uh, the echelon of American Samoa and and carrying on uh, the traditions that are there. So, uh, yeah, I'm a senior citizen. I played three South Pacific games with these guys, right? Uh, we started out in Guam in 1999. We went to Fiji, uh, uh, Fiji in 2003, and then to Samoa in 2007. Uh, and as we speak right now, I'm 57 years old. So I've been playing this game a long time. And I'm glad to be here and use me as a, a stepping stone if I can help you with any questions that you have. So, uh, Rob, I return it back to y'all. And you could probably still swing it, man. <laughs> I, I just took batting practice the other day. <laughs> nice. Nice. Drop bombs. Drop bombs. Is, is on a 10 round? round? Hey. Uh, yeah, he's right here. Hold on. Kind of, we're having a late dinner. Okay. If you can just say hello. <laughs> hello, Rob. Hello, Billy. So Anatema, he uh, was a middle infielder, played shortstop. Um, this guy had a cannon. He could run. He could hit. He had great baseball IQ. Um, th this guy is the Derek Jeter uh, of Samoa. Is, is there any words of encouragement that you want to share with these guys, At? Uh, man, I, all I got to say is just keep grinding, you know, like I said, when I got picked into the team, I was already older than you know, I was 28, and I haven't played baseball in 10 years. And uh, probably one of the best experiences I had, yes. you know, to play with, to represent Samoa. But to you girls, just keep grinding and keep pushing forward. That's awesome. Because So he said he hasn't played in 10 years when, when we got together as a, in the Samoa national team, right? So imagine 10 years not playing starting on the national team and absolutely killing it, right? Because of the athleticism, right, of who Anthony is, but this is also the athleticism that all of you guys have, right? That, that, that's why we believe in you uh, because we've seen it in the flesh for people that just, you know, be, has the ability to play. Um, Chris Solaita grew up on the island too. Uh, when I was young, I wanted to be just like Chris. This dude was incredible. <laughs> so share a little bit about your story, bro. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So, hey everyone. So my name is Chris, um, short for Christian, or my mom likes to call me Carriciano. But uh, anyways, um, so I, let me see. Well, so I went to school for, I went to Marist, attended Marist, and then that's where I played baseball at. But before um, uh, Marist, I would, I, I came from Hawaii um, and then uh, ended up playing down in uh, American Samoa. But before that, I also grew up in American Samoa prior to going to Hawaii. And then I just returned because um, my mom didn't feel comfortable with me being in Hawaii by myself. But anyways, um, so I returned back to American Samoa, which was um, a really good experience because I ended up playing uh, coming back and playing with all these guys like Ted, Rob. Um, by this time, these guys were, were grown up, you know, Sale, um, and even uh, uh, Joe on there. Um, we all had really, really good time as far as the experience we had going through the uh, the program with Ray Brown. Um, that's when the, the baseball program started growing. Um, and then we were having international tournaments, which really, ex um, um, you know, expanded the, the, the baseball program as far as in American Samoa and getting more exposure other than just playing in the South Pacific. So now we were able to, you know, come out to colleges in the U.S. and start playing there straight from American Samoa. And... Um, my experience going to, you know, a junior college, uh, was really, really, um, amazing because I got to meet, uh, other players from like Puerto Rico, from Canada, um, you know, even from Europe, you know, coming in and, and playing at, uh, at the junior college level. And these were like really high level players too, um, that because they didn't play in division one, um, that didn't mean that they weren't good. They were good. They just, you know, didn't have the grades or just didn't have that much exposure, just like I did. So I didn't have that much exposure uh, coming out, but I was able to have um, that opportunity to play at a junior college level. And then it just translated from there on. Um, but still keeping, um, you know, my roots of, as far as going back every summer to American Samoa and playing in those international games, right? Um, so the, the, my experience in playing in, in, um, in the U.S. Um, taught me a lot of things. And then um, now looking back at it, um, if I would have, you know, if you asked me like, what could I have changed? Um, my answer would be nothing. Um, the reason why I say that is because um, the things that I went through, um, you know, as a as a, a growing up from high school all the way to college and even till now, uh, if I would have went back and changed what I did back then, then I wouldn't be the person that I am right now, right? So that's why I wouldn't change anything as far as going back. Um, but my words of encouragement to you guys is that um, don't limit yourself to the possibilities that is out there. That because we come from, you know, a tiny island on the, you know, on the map that's only like, you know, you know, uh, a speck of dust that's like on the, on the globe, you know, that doesn't mean that there's not that, there's no opportunity. Let me look at Mathis, right? Um, look at Ted too. Ted is the first one that got drafted out of there. He'll tell you his story. Um, and then so many people that came out of there, there's, there's a, um, a thing called hope, right. And hope in, in human, um, in us, it's, it's all about the future. It's never about the past, you know? So like the Bible says, there's three things, right? Three of them are the greatest is faith, hope, and love. Um, and one of them is hope. So have that hope that, you know, you have that potential and not be limited, Right. Um, so that's my only advice to you guys is, you know, don't limit your, yourself that because you guys are coming from American Samoa, um, you know, just 
think about um, the people that came behind you guys, you know, and use that as, as an example um, to motivate you guys a little bit more, right? But the, the true motivation actually comes from within you. Mm. So, um, but yeah, that's it. That's where I'm at right now. Um, if you wanna know where I'm at, I'm in North Carolina. Um, I've been here since 2004. I've uh, been traveling the world because I've been uh, I've been in the military for the last 17 and a half years. Uh, I'm about to retire here in a little bit, but um, but yeah, I have two kids, grown up. They're 20. Uh, my son Nate is 24. Uh, my daughter Lonnie is uh, 20 years old. Um, my wife um, Sarah. We've been married for the last 20 years. So, but yeah, life has been really really good. Um, can be, you know, I can't complain, being very, very blessed. So, and to have this opportunity, Rob just hit me up like an hour ago, like, hey man, you know, he left a, a message on my phone and, you know, I was doing something and I'm glad that he reached out. And this is an awesome opportunity to actually reach back to you guys down in America Samoa um, to be able to do something like this, at least give you guys some kind of inspiration. Um, and I and also, I thank Rob for putting this together. So, but yeah. That's enough for me, so. Nice, good, wise words. Uh, some of you, if you didn't get the link from Pi uh, for the podcast, a lot of these guys have their stories there. It's, it's an extensive kind of story of them. It, the reason we did that is so that you can always go back to hear their story, right? Uh, we haven't had a chance to do Ted and Mathis. We will, but you'll hear a little bit uh, from Ted uh, and then also Francis as well. Um, but we're doing this because we want you guys to grasp, right, and immerse yourself um, in success thinking, right? Everybody here has been successful, and we want to pass that along to you. Um, speaking of success, Ted had a great college career, and then after that, so I'll let him uh, tell a little bit of that. And I think I may need to interject as well because Ted can be quite modest, but bro, Ted, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you you're the dude, man. <laughs> uh, wait, but I'm I'm not. Joe should go because he's older than me, and then Sally. And okay, then, okay. And then, <laughs> let's go I, with the. I had it backwards then. All yeah. right, go go for go for it, uh, uh Santa. <laughs> yeah, hey, look at his beard. He's grandpa. Yeah. Hey, no, 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 Ted. You you played you played a uh, higher level than I did. I'll let you go. I respectfully. Right. If you insist, I'll go ahead. Uh, since we're we're Thank running you. out. Of uh, thanks, Rob. All right, so um, here's the thing. When I got into baseball, I was a freshman in high school. The reason being is my dad would take me the day after sign up clothes for, uh, for Little League, and then he'll just say, oh, they're not here, and then I wouldn't sign up. So I never got the chance to play Little League or T-ball or any of that. Uh, so I got into high school and uh, my first year of high school was actually a really bad experience. So I, I actually quit baseball after that, but I had a couple of friends and my brother who were playing on the national team. They said, you know, just come out for the summer. Let's see, you know, you, you might learn, a, you know, a few things here and there. And that's when I picked up uh, wanting to pitch. In my mind, the whole time, I always wanted to pitch. So uh, that's what I pursued. After that summer, I excelled extremely quickly, and I did a lot of, you know, additional readings on the side, um, you know, looked at things about pitching, asked so many different players from different teams what they thought about certain pitches. So it was my own inquisitive mind that made me want to pursue pitching and then perfect it, right? So by the time I got to my sophomore year in high school, I was blowing people away and I became uh, an all-star that year. And, and mind you, it's, it's nothing compared to the United States because we have six games for a season, maybe two more games for, you know, postseason. Whereas kids out here, they play, you know, at least 15 games. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, they have so many games under their belt, but that shouldn't deter you. You, you, you have the tools and, um, the thing that I did a lot of was I was known as the kid who walked to the baseball field all the time. And I would walk back after practice. So I used that time to think about what I was doing. 
what I did that day, what happened in the game. People would stop, hey, get in the car. And I said, no, no, I'd rather walk. You know, let me walk. So I did a lot of like mental playing, right? I played in my mind how that game went and what did I do? How did that feel when I did, uh, I threw something really, really well. So I try to be in tune with my body and my mind, right? So, I mean, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do, but I just fell in love with the game and I had that passion. So that's my advice to you is, first of all, you gotta, you gotta love what you do and have a passion for it. And then things will just open up. If you start working on your own, practice isn't, it, it shouldn't just stop at practice. After that, you should go home and, and work on things yourself. Uh, like Chris said, I was, uh, I was actually drafted out of Samoa as a free agent by the Braves. They came down, they held a, a clinic for the entire team and I was fortunate enough to be one of the guys at the end. Uh, I didn't take it because I, I wasn't confident in my, my playing skills. So I decided to go to college. And that was, that was a good choice for me, right? I had something to fall back on. Baseball was just, uh, you know, frosting on the cake. And it got me to travel to Australia, travel to Guam. I even played in Europe, you know, played on the East Coast, semi-professional. Uh, and we even took it that year. So I had a great year that year. I had the uh, MVP ring, trophy, and all that stuff. But my biggest achievement was actually getting my education. So I'm super happy about baseball and what it did for me. And I'm sure there's so much talent in Samoa that's not being tapped. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are all on this call. And uh, please reach out to all of us. We're a good resource for you guys. And um, yeah, that's all I have. you have any questions, just uh, hit us up. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Ted was, um, he threw really well. Yeah, as a pitcher, obviously. Uh, he also had a good stick too. Yeah, he could swing it. <laughs> cool, you wanna pass the mic to, um, uh, did you wanna go Saleh? And then we'll go Joe and, and Francis. Yeah, sure. So, Sali, um, Solaitam from uh, the village of Nuuli. And, um, you know, of course, we grew up, uh, our family, in our family, we grew up playing baseball. And so it was us, Chris, you know, like a lot of us in that, it was in a little uh, neighborhood area where we all used to grow up, you know, playing at home. Baseball was everything to us. Um, and, you know, just, you know, thinking about it um, as we were doing baseball, there was also football was popular at the time. Uh, but, you know, at that time, I, uh, uh, I, I didn't really care much for baseball in the beginning because, you know, um, until, uh, you know, Ray Brown came around. And so, and it wasn't, it wasn't until Ray Brown came around where, you know, there was a, uh, there was a really good approach and organized approach to how we grew up. And uh, I grew up playing baseball with a lot of the clinics and it was more of a, it was more of a systemic approach when he came, meaning, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, there was a lot of training. We did a lot of train the trainers uh, to, you know, to train us in umpiring and uh, train us in coaching as well as playing. And so as we players grew up, we, we grew up playing, we grew up learning how to umpire and, you know, certain certification levels that we, we end up having to do. So it was a more, uh, it was a more complete program when we when Ray came around to teach us. Right. And so, uh, it helped us all grow, you know, individually. And it wasn't until then was where I, I became very obsessed about certain things about the game, uh, where, you know, I was, you know, like, and so it's a good thing to, to be obsessed about something. I, I remember watching, um, Robert, you know, Robert, uh, you know, Robert Bennett had, you know, the hands, the smooth hands. And he was just, the, I mean, he had the smoothest hands in town where, he, you know, he would, you know, he would feed the double plays and stuff. And it was just crazy. He would dive after, I mean, he, he, he would float through the air, but, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it, it was, it was awesome to see, you know, Ted, you know, was obsessed about the pitching. And uh, I even saw Chris, you know, Chris, you know, how he worked, he was very deliberate in how he approached, you know, and, and it was awesome to see each and every one of us, you know, be very obsessed about something. For me, I was mostly obsessed about my hitting, you know, and um, I used to spend hours and I don't know, you know, like, like I, what I would do is, you know, anytime I had, you know, the chance, I would like pick up a stick in my left hand and throw a rock up in my right hand and hit the ball towards the back of our house, 
sometimes and then I would switch hands and try to do the same thing. You know, a rock was a very small thing. And so the tools were there. We all had the equipment, but, you know, there were other little things that we would do to kind of uh, hone in on our hone in on our craft. And so, um, it, you know, um, so where did that take, you know, where did all that take me, you know, as a person? I think the biggest thing that I learned uh, from this, from the sport in itself is not just the technique. The baseball is a way it's, it, it's, it, it's a means to get you to where you need to get to. Right. And it's just one way uh, to get you to where you need to get to. Right. At the end of the day, you guys are always trying to better yourselves, whether it's in baseball, whether it's in football, whatever it is to get there. Uh, what I would, what I would like to say is what I remember mostly was the people, you know, was, you know, it was just the relationships that we had, the bond that we had. We always joked with each other, right? And so a lot of those things are very important. You know, cherish those people that are around you. Cherish, you know, the friendships that you have there because as a team, you guys are going to fight together, right? You know, there's there's a lot of, uh, maybe I shouldn't talk about the fights that the, the teams got into with other, you know, in Hawaii, uh, Rob, you know, if you guys remember, <laughs> you know, but, you know, the thing the thing is, I'm not encouraging anybody here to get into any fights. It, all it is, it's just, there's a lot of special moments that we all spent together where we were a team, we were one unit and we were all working to win games. And so as, so as I, I'm in the military, right? You know, our, our job is to fight, you know, our, our, uh, our, our job right now is to fight and win, you know, our nation's wars, right? So we have teams, you know, we have a, you know, I, like, and, and for me, you know, that's what I've learned. I've learned how to be a part of a team. Uh, and that's what's very important to my job. People are important. Uh, so that's all I have right now. Just, you know, for time's sake, just to, I'll pass it on over to uh, was it um, whoever's next after me. Yeah, I see, um, I see Dukes <clears throat> trying to jump in. I, I hope he can because he's at a graduation, but he wanted to pop in really fast. Uh, I don't think he's on now, but um, yeah. So go, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> uh, well, I think, uh, I think we all kind of have our own baseball stories and, uh, they're very, very similar and very, very different at the same time. I think, uh, we, uh, I, I think it all came down to, you know, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. My name is, my name is Joe Arredondo. I, I grew up, uh, I was, I was born in the States. But I was raised in uh, American Samoa from, from, I think, before I was a year old. Uh, my mom moved back there before I was a, you know, just a baby. And uh, grew up in Utule and then Uli, and then uh, went to high school at, uh, at Leonge and graduated in 96. Played with some very good ball players, um, with uh, most notably Stanley. Uh, I played with I guess Isaiah was a year older than us. Uh, John Tufa, you know, a number of good players came out of the game. But, you know, I think we all grew up together and played uh, played ball together and then against each other with our different schools in high school. Then we also, you know, also came together for, you know, for, for, for the island, uh, playing off island and competing and, 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 and representing and doing very well for ourselves. Um, I think, Rob, I understand, you know, what you're doing uh, for everybody here is, is, is a bit of a motivational thing for everybody. And I think that the biggest thing for kids and students and athletes coming off of American Samoa is, is the opportunity uh, that you have from a population so small, the, the percentages of you making it in whatever you want to do coming from an island uh, of such a small population in your field in, or interest or sport or whatever is, is, is tenfold what it is for the kids in the States. Uh, you have, uh, they use the term or the, or the, or the uh, when you hear about Samoan football players coming from Samoa, it's, it's, it's what, how many, what, 35 players from 75,000 people, whatever it is, you know, that's a small town anywhere in the U.S., okay? And if you have the opportunity to do something, whatever you want, and go wherever you want, it is yours. 
it is, uh, you know, it's hard telling high school seniors that right now. You're talking to a bunch of grown men who have been there and done that. And you can call it fia popo. You can call it, you know, you know, who's this talking to us? But you guys don't understand until you until you look back and say, "Hey, I wish I knew then what I know now. What I what I should have. What I wish I knew then what I should have known now, or whatever it is. It, it's uh, you know, I coach. Uh, I help coach my my, my son's teams. Um, you know, they. Uh, my youngest son is eight years old right now. He's a very good ball player. Um, I think he's a very good ball player. He, he could always do better, but, but you know, I, I, I want him to do better, but at the same time, I can't want it for him. You know, I can want him to do better. I can tell him stuff, but, you know, uh, he's not going to listen to me. He's going to listen to coaches better than he's going to listen to his father. And I think that goes for any son, daughter, or whoever. Um, but the fact that, you know, we learned those things on the, on, on the baseball field from Ben, from Ray, from Tony, from all of our coaches, uh, we learned those things, uh, how to be better men, how to be better players, how to be better this and that. But you've got to want it for yourself. You know, you've got to want it for yourself. And we can't, we can't want it for you. And I tell my sons that I said, you know, I can't want it for you. And if you want to, uh, if you want to, what, what did Ray say? If you want to go be a baseball player, go be a baseball player. If you want to go dig ditches, go dig ditches. You know, if you want to come home and, uh, you know, work at home, then come home, work at home. But you have the opportunity for anybody on island, off island, to do whatever you want to do, do it. And the fact that, like I said, because of the because of the numbers, the population, and and the opportunity that you have coming from such a small island, you have that recognition, and and that that, that avenue to uh, to go wherever you want to go. You know, um, I know that a lot of us have our own stories, have our own opportunities. Some made the most of it, some didn't. And and you know, I know I've talked to Rob many times, and, and you know, I I. I wish I had half the drive that he did, you know, half the drive that Robert Penny had, half the drive that Chris Solita had, half the drive that, that Mathis had, you know, you, you got to want it for yourself. That's, uh, that's the main thing. Um, I personally was a decent ball player, but I was, you know, halfway lazy at times and halfway decent at times. And it just, uh, it catches up with you and, you know, for you guys, as young as you are right now, you have every opportunity in the world to do whatever you want. Um, I don't want to sit here and make it sound like a lecture or anything to, to tell you what you need to do or not do. But, you know, hey, in, in 10, 20, 30 years, when you're sitting back looking and thinking about, oh, man, I should have done this. Oh, man, I should have done it. Hey, listen, you're young right now. You don't have kids. You're not tied down to, 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 to family obligations right now, you know. Do what you want to do, have a plan, and make the most of it. You know, don't uh, don't be stupid, don't uh, don't get into trouble, don't uh, don't do anything to embarrass your parents, your family, your your, your island, your any your school, anything. You know, just just have a plan and make it happen. So that's uh, you know, you can get lucky, you can get good, and, and and a little bit of both helps you helps you along the way. So. So I'll say. Good deal, man. Good deal. What up, dude? <laughs> I know you're at uh, the graduation, so um, let's have you jump in and say hello, kind of give some words of encouragement. Uh, <clears throat> you can share a little bit about your story. Now, again, FYI, guys, a lot of these guys, um, they've done an extensive, you know, uh, interview on the podcast designed to, for you guys, right? So make sure to catch that, too. Um, but I know that Duke's short on time, so we'll let him... Uh, say what's up, and then, uh, then then we'll go to Francis after. What's up, family? Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, sorry for coming on here late. Um, I'm in the middle of a graduation um, celebration, so I, I, I had to sneak away real quick to, to, to come up here and, and, and spend some time. And uh, 
want to just meet you guys and, you know, just let you guys know that you guys mean a lot to us, you know. Um, and I I hope and, and pray that that you guys continue to 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 do what you guys love and and and, and continue to to inspire others as well, you know. So I, I appreciate you guys and and and, and um, all the hard work that you guys are putting in. And and you know, us out here, we're, we're excited. And 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 when we heard about this and everything that Sci-Fi has got going on and and um, putting together for for all of you guys, you know, it just um, it brings a lot of um, joy, you know, to 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 our hearts because of how much baseball in Samoa means to us. So baseball and softball in general, you know, so anything in general, because that's what we did when we were growing up, you know, we were just like you guys. Um, and we, we want you guys to, to continue to, to do what you guys love, your passion and everything, you know, like, and, and we're going to be here to support you guys. And we're here to, to help you guys in um, whatever way that, that we can um, provide support. We will be here to, to help you guys. And I just wanted to make sure that that um, I was able to sneak away for a little bit and come over here and, and just kind of talk to you guys and, and see all of you guys and then see some of my brothers that I haven't seen in so long, man, like Joe and, and, and Mathis and, and all of you guys, you know, so it's so good to see you guys. And um, I'm so happy that that um, I was able to to, to sneak out and, and spend some time with you guys, but no, man, like I, I'm just here to, for support, you know, whatever it is that you guys need um, contacts as far as, you know, with Robert and with myself and all the other um, Usos that are out here. Um, we're, we're here to, to help you guys and, and get you guys to, to where you guys want to get to. And just, just to be there to, to help support you guys. So i um, looking forward to, to, to talking to each and every one of you guys, you know, individually or even, even as a group, um so but my um my only advice that you know to you guys to continue to do what you guys are doing you know um don't let anything um deter you guys from what you guys want to do if you guys are if, if your goal is to come out here and play baseball and to get an education play softball do it you know like put you you put your mind into it and 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 good things will happen you know the, the good lord will will be there to 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 provide the, um, the support that you need as well as us. So we're, we're here for you guys and we're, we're excited to, to see each and every one of you guys. So keep, keep doing what you're doing. And um, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Cool. Appreciate it. So Duke played at uh, Vote Tech, Newly Vote Tech, uh, with another guy, um, one of our other family, uh, Ronald. But that school produced some pretty good talent. And, and Duke and Ronald was from that. Uh, Francis Pony is an incredible, I highly recommend you listen to his story because we go into detail about him getting drafted, him getting, um, you know, talking to the scout, negotiating his deal, incredible story. This dude's got a cannon, he can hit. Um, so make sure to, to listen to his story, but I'll have him share a little bit about, uh, you know, where he's been, but then also give you some encouragement because this guy was a stud, absolute stud. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Baby to go and telling me to jump on here. <laughs> so it's all good. It was, but uh, yeah, my name is Francis Pony. Uh, been playing baseball for man, or I played baseball for you know, 15 years. So, but I, I was fortunate enough to play well, T ball when I was young. How I got started was a uh, little flyer. I, I lived in Compton, a flyer from uh, our school. And I took it to, you know, Pops and it was like, yeah, there's something different. Let's uh, get out of the hood for a little bit. And then uh, went to try out. First ball that I grabbed, I threw it over the fence. I didn't, <laughs> didn't know what to do. I'm like, all right, you know, just threw it over the fence. So, you know, it started from there. And, you know, just being competitive, I just tried to be the best player on the field. Uh, just went to high school at Carson High. Ended up getting drafted uh, by Cincinnati. I went to Harvard College. Um, uh, into the draft again. Pittsburgh picked me up, and uh, yeah, it's all on the story on Rob's uh, podcast uh, that we did a while ago. But um, uh, it's cool to see all you guys. You know, it's a it's a blessing to see you know our people, you know, enjoying the game and trying to uh, trying to make it 
trying to get my kids to. I got four kids. I'm trying to get them to play. You know, it's a little hard, but you know, they they love rugby. I don't know how how that happened, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, what motivated me when I was growing up? Well, it was easy. It was uh my family. You know who I was. Wasn't a lot of brown people that played. You know, so when I stepped on the field, I always wanted to uh, to be the best one on the field. I didn't care who it was, you know. So just try to be a beast at everything I do. When I threw the ball, I tried to throw it the hardest I could. You know, never know who's watching you, who's in the stands. You know, I had uh, colleges come to, you know, look at me play when I was in high school. Uh, that's what I really wanted to do was go to a university. Um, I was fortunate enough to get drafted. So, you know, I took that route. But everywhere I went, everywhere I played, you know, I took uh, my parents with me, you know, my city, you know, where I grew up in Compton. You know, it was, uh, wasn't easy, but I was motivated first by some of the OGs playing on the street. would get a, a rake and hit a tennis ball over the, over the houses. So that was uh, my motivation at first. You know, that's what got me started. And then, you know, ended up playing some pro ball, played um, with the Pirates for four years. And uh, yeah, man, like I'm here too. Uh, it's like what these guys said, any advice you guys need, uh, it's a grind. You guys don't, you guys try to hone your craft and whatever you do. I was a catcher and uh, you know, every drill that I did, you have to do it with a purpose. Mm -hmm. don't, don't take anything for granted. And uh, do you remember where you, where you come from and who you represent? Yeah. So I always took that with me. So, yeah, any uh, anything I could do for you guys, just let me know. And uh, I try my best. I'm I'm living in the village of uh, Long Beach right now. So, you know, but it's all good. Rob, thanks for hitting me up. Appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to I wanna set the stage for you guys uh, and give you some, some tough love, right? But then also uh, give you a proper perspective. Um, the overall vision, right, is bigger than us. It's bigger than you, right? Uh, it's about that cycle of being able to achieve what you want to do, but then also giving back and then continue to give back, right? Because eventually you're gonna be in our position and you have kids and then you wanna to continue to encourage them. So first thing in terms of vision is we wanna take this bigger than just you. You've got your little brothers and sisters that are eight, nine, 10 right now that are looking up to you, right? So you have to set the, 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 the example. But what's important for you to know, and I don't care who you are, right? It's not about you. Right. Our goal and our vision is to make sure that you can become the best person, right? That you, whether you're a brother, a sister, or whatever it is, but the best person, because that's what's going to take you to the next level, whether it's baseball or race car driving. Doesn't matter if you, as an individual, right, are living right, have integrity, are humble, and you have the work ethic, you're going to go far. If it's baseball you choose, basketball, underwater basket weaving, right? You're the best person. And that's the goal for us is we wanna help you be the best person. And if it's through baseball, we've got the connections and the stories and the encouragement. If it's softball, we can help you there, right? So that's the biggest thing that you need to remember now is the vision is bigger than you, right? So if you have a bad day and you start throwing a fit, you know what, fix it, right? It doesn't matter because you have the, uh, what I tell my kids is the most important play is the next one, <laughs> right? The most important play, the most important decision is the next one because you always have another opportunity. With a bad attitude, you're not going to look for the next one because you're, you're all moping and whining, right? Don't let that small mentality get to you. Focus on the bigger picture and you'll be fine. So that's number one. Um, number two is Francis said this point blank period. It's a grind. It's a grind, and I think Ted and, and Joe alluded to this as well as Chris, is you might be great on the island, but you're great for six games, 10 at most. The players over here 
your age are playing a hundred times a, a, a year, at least a hundred, right? That's real game action. That doesn't include the practice time, the cage, right? The fungos, all that stuff. So compound, so, right? If you think you're great, good for you. Take that confidence. But again, just remember, it's a grind. You're gonna have to work, but then you're gonna also have to prove that you're good, <laughs> right? So, um, unfortunately, I need you to remember that no matter how good you think you are right now, there's always going to be enough opportunity for you to prove it, right? And there's a lot of kids ahead of you that you have to go and you know beat out, because when you advance to the next level from college to the professional ranks, it's about beating the next person, right? Because it's a job. When you're at college, you're you you have to deliver. You have to prove that you're a good player. And if you don't, somebody's taking your job, right? So don't get too high and mighty, right? Stay humble. And that's just naturally who we are as, as you know, Samoans and Polynesians. Um, remember that, just like what, you know, Francis said is remember who you represent. Because again, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than you. It's this culture of baseball in the Polynesian islands. And we're trying to, you know, continue that. Um, and especially in honor of Tony Soloita who started the whole thing, right? And everybody that came after that, from Murph to Joe Salavea, everybody, we want to honor all of those guys that paved the way, including these guys here. So that's number two. Number one is, right, it's bigger than you. Number two is, it's a grind. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't grow that ego, because here's what I know to be true. Us Polynesians, we have a big ego. <laughs> we have an ego, right? But don't let that fool you, okay? Um, last thing I want to set the expectation is, now that we're connected, especially salute to Pi, right? She's on the island. She's putting everything together to go from 200 kids to 500 this year in Little League. Mind blowing. And because she's, she understands how things work, she's put in the infrastructure and she's super savvy. Uh, we had a, I don't know, a five hour conversation earlier this week. So we know that she knows what she's doing. And because of that, we're going to support her, right? We're going to put all our full support. What does that mean? like specifically, well, it means we're gonna call coaches, right? We're gonna set up games for you guys to come here and play. We're gonna get you in front of scouts, right? We're gonna talk to mental, whatever, everything that's needed to make your opportunity better than ours is what we're gonna put, put our you know, um, full force behind. Unfortunately, uh, uh, a man named Murphy Sua uh, isn't here, um, but he sends his love. He's definitely instrumental in all of us, right? He's just as in influential as Tony Soloita because they actually, you know, uh, played together um, during that time. And to say that he's got all the connections needed is an understatement, <laughs> right? So you guys are extremely lucky, probably in the best possible position than anybody, you know, on island or in all of the South Pacific, right? When it comes to you getting somewhere. But like Joe said, we can open a door. But if you have a bad attitude, if you have a faulty perspective, if you're too selfish, if you are too emotional, you're, you're emo, you know, oh, I had a bad day, oh my gosh, and then everything is, you know, <laughs> and don't want to go do your chores. Hell no, nah, man. No, right? It, you got to really build that resilience and we want to help you with that too. Because this is what's going to happen. You might be good, great. We get you out here, your position, you play Juco, you earn your thing, and then you're faced with temptations. I'm being real. Right, there's gonna be drugs, there's gonna be sex, there's gonna be money. All of these temptations are gonna come at you. But if you're not a solid person, if you don't have integrity, right, if you don't understand that you represent more than yourself, right, you represent your family, you represent us, right, as a culture, if you don't really understand that, it's gonna be hard for you to succeed after, right? So that's the message that we want to be extremely clear about, right? You have. Yeah, we're gonna pay, we already paved the way. There's doors that can be opened immediately, right? But if you're not prepared to walk through it, then you're not prepared to walk through it, point blank period. And what does that look like? Well, that's this whole thing. Pi is gonna work with you, know who you are, right? Know your values. Well, what is that? <laughs> Figure it out, <laughs> right? Um, read your Bible, pray, serve, do your fa'ows right? Do the Umu stuff, whatever you need to do 
to show you're responsible, you take that into your college career and then into your life. Um, we just want you to succeed as people, right? Joe's got a great life. Francis has the kids, right? He's an incredible father, right? So that's where we're at now as people. You know, it's really not about the destination, it's about that journey and who you become. So that's the vision that I wanted to cast with you guys um, with Pi uh, to set the proper expectations. We'll jump right into some Q&A. If anybody needs to leave, you know, no problem, go for it. Don't feel pressured that you need to stay. Uh, but I'd probably stay on for another half hour to give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions and then have everybody else kind of chime in. Um, Rob. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. A, a lot of you guys who are on here uh, going to uh, going off island for school because for the first time or, or have you been off island before or, or what's what's the story there? Because when you when you go off island for the first time, there's there's all kinds of, of it's a whole new world, you know. So, like Rob said, remember where you come from. Remember who you're representing, and 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 not get distracted and have focus about what you want to what you're there for. Because you will come home real quick. <laughs> you will come home real quick, you know. And uh, waste it, you know. You want to make everybody proud, like you know. You want to make everybody proud and do the best for you and your family. And and, and if you, if you don't. There's a lot of, like you said, a lot of temptation out there. You know, be ready. Be ready to be distracted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, sorry, can you hear me, guys? <clears throat> yes. All right, let me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, guys. Sorry, I had to go outside of the office because we're all, we're all piled in there in different areas. So you'll see, like, some of us are sitting in a corner. Some of us are on the table. Some of us, some of us are on, we're just kind of all spread around. So um, I just wanted to come outside and uh, say hi to everybody. Um, I know I was supposed to talk first, but um, um, again, thank you all for, thank you all for, um, for getting on call. It means a lot uh, to us. Um, thank you all for, for being an inspiration uh, to these kids here, uh, to our country, to our island home. Um, I really do appreciate you all just, again, um, getting on call and, and sharing your story and your words of encouragement, uh, because that's important for them here. And uh, for a long time, a lot of our athletes, um, especially our athletes who aren't playing football, and again, nothing against football, just a lot of our athletes that aren't playing uh, that particular sport have kind of felt hopeless. And, uh, and uh, we're really hoping to, to kind of change that. And, and, and you being on call is, is giving them hope. So thank you again uh, so much for doing that. Um, I remember I shared with Rob uh, <laughs> baseball, how much, I love baseball. Uh, when I started playing baseball, uh, when league age four uh, was coming around for t-ball, I remember uh, wanting to play so badly. I grew up with, uh, after Tony had passed, I, I grew up in uh, with Ben and uh, under Ben's leadership, the Kings um, and all of them there. Uh, Chris Sale. Uh, Duke. I just sent Rob a picture. I think it was Duke that was the umpire at that time when I was younger. Um, but I, I remember everybody was like umpires. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember it later on, I remember my older girl cousins. It was like uh, all the baseball players were kind of the reason why they would show up to the field. So I, I would think they were there to watch me play and cheering me on. But uh, come to realize they're like, no, we didn't come watch you play. We can't watch the Solita boys. Like, so, uh, uh, yeah, they were, they were hot stuff back then. And, uh, you know, um, really, um, a lot of the, um, a lot of our younger players, including my brothers, um, you know, looked up to, to them and, uh, wanted, um, and, and when we heard about people getting recruited out of here for baseball, you know, later on in life, um, some of my brothers also wanted to play, but 
uh, that didn't happen for them as well. Um, I played um, Little League here again every summer um, under Ben's leadership uh, with all the different coaches here with the cultures and all those guys. Um, and when I moved back home uh, in 2013, the end of 2013, so I've been home for, well, I've been home for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> to try not to. So when I moved home in 2013, um, I was excited to bring my kids to, to play baseball here. And uh, unfortunately, there wasn't any programs. And uh, year after year, we were asking around, um, hoping that maybe some of the, the, the programs will come back. A lot of them were saying that kids weren't interested in baseball anymore. And um, and that there was uh, all this uh, hype about football again, which is fine, uh, but there just wasn't anything for the kids at that time who didn't play football. And so um, fast forward to recently um, when talking and starting Little League, um, it really was again to, we talk about legacy and, and honoring those legacies. And, and so, you know, honoring those that were uh, there before us and ensuring that we're continuing their legacy while also giving an opportunity for these, for these young athletes to play. And so um, we talked about, uh, Rob and I talked about how many kids we started with and now we're doubling that uh, this coming summer. And uh, DOE just reached out to us earlier this morning um, talking about considering Little League as a PE sport and having Little League and all the schools. And so that's, that's where we're going to. We're, we're going to bigger, higher heights and we're, we're gonna get more kids involved and more kids active and more kids out there playing and uh, hopefully providing them uh, with the opportunities outside of high school here. So I played high school at Leone High School uh, baseball uh, under Nick King's leadership. Uh, uh, he was the ca uh, coach at that time. And I, I quickly realized that there was no opportunities for girls in baseball. Uh, <laughs> all my friends played softball. My girlfriends played softball. My guy friends were uh, still trying to encourage me to play baseball with them. But uh, again, quickly realized that uh, there was no future for me in baseball after high school. So uh, I ended up playing basketball and, and, and going that route. So <laughs> that, was, that was always fun. But um, continued playing baseball with uh, a lot of our friends um, during the summer times. And uh, again, all those, all of you guys that are on here, um, I remember just again, growing up and looking up, uh, <laughs> you guys aren't old or anything, but you know, <laughs> just realizing there was all this talent here um, in the sport. And like you're saying, regardless of what sport you're in, it really does take a lot of time and effort. And um, again, I just appreciate everybody that's on here encouraging um, all, all the athletes that you see on here, um, <clears throat> they're kind of the cream of the crop. So we have like the best soccer players on island, the two girls that you see there. And then we got uh, the best baseball players on island, which are all the boys there. And then uh, we got all the best softball players uh, on call as well. So they're from Samoana, they're from Leone, they're from Kahunga. Uh, we didn't just pick from one team. One, um, one school, uh, we really just saw these standout players and, and they know our work ethic. They work with us um, as well in Little League. A lot of them are our junior umpires um, and we're training them to, to learn more about the sport so they have a better understanding of what the correct rules are and all that other great stuff. So um, yeah, thank you for giving us the opportunity. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let uh, each and every one of them introduce themselves. And uh, I had them write down. Quick, a... Real quick, sorry, I, want you, I, want you, I want you to know that, that a number of us have had many conversations over the years about, you know, those of us that are off island going back to Samoa and doing what we can for, for baseball. And none of us have. And the fact that you have done it to this point and doubling numbers in Little, Little League is where it starts. And that. I think each and every one of us will take our hats off to you and say thank you very much 
for from the bottom of our hearts for doing that because that's where it starts. Because and 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 someone who, make played, <laughs> who played no, hey, I'm I'm about to cry because someone who played on the field, you know, when baseball first started many many years ago in '86 '87, like I did, it, it started with a dream with Tony, and and many people have have carried that flag, and you are the next person doing that right now, and all of us see that and keep doing what you're doing. And whatever help you need from us, let us know, please. Thank you. Hey, hey Sci-Fi, I'm just, I mean, I, I'll speak on behalf of our family too. I know we have Duke and Chris on here too, and they would probably echo the same thing. Uh, you know, and I, I know right now my dad is probably looking down from heaven, you know, like really happy that somebody is out there carrying the torch and that's all that matters. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. I've got my son over here sitting here with me and he's here, you know, he's here seeing you know, this thing move forward to, you know, as a legacy of our whole Solarica family. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. Your dad uh, was a great man. And uh, I share that with Rob as well, was very instrumental in a lot of things in my life. Uh, when I was fresh out of high school, I ended up working up at the shipyard and he was the general manager there. And I started as a secretary and uh, kind of taught myself how to, uh, and, and uh, marketing, and he was the one that helped guide me. I went from the secretary to a marketing director there. And uh, Ben is very dear to my heart. And uh, you know, again, he he provided a lot of guidance for me as a you know as a young uh, female someone in the business world as well. And 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 because of him, I was able to to use uh, marketing director as clout when I went off island and. and I ended up being a, you know, a contractor for the military and a couple of things, but again, you know, um, thank you for that. And, and I, I really do appreciate that. Like I said, you're carrying, you're carrying that flag now. And we all appreciate it very, 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 very much. Thank you. I know some of them have some questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, so well, I'm gonna go ahead let's and- hear from, uh, Let's hear it from the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and have them each uh, introduce themselves, but I do wanna introduce uh, the one that's also behind the scenes. He's our uh, chief umpire, our, uh, our uh, trainer and all that other great stuff. So uh, Malu uh, just moved home uh, from Utah about five years ago, okay, five, three, three years ago. <laughs> uh, he is my husband, I promise. <laughs> Um, and uh, he does, uh, again, he does all the, the trainings for our athletes. And uh, so this is, this is my Malu here. And uh, hello. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Uh, very grateful to everybody. We really appreciate it. Austin athletes. Again, uh, my Malu, I honestly, a, a passionate student of life and a passionate student of the game, as well as a, um, just an eager servant for everything that we have, have going on. And honestly, I think uh, it, it, I would be remiss if I didn't say that developing the youth of a nation is perhaps one of the most underrated things. And we are super dedicated to, to help out and appreciate all the help that we can get. So thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. So that's, that's Malu there. And so uh, I wanted to make sure he introduced himself. And uh, again, he's, He's kind of the one that's been, uh, he does all the training for our girls and our guys. Uh, he does the seven healthy habits and all that great stuff, making sure they're getting the right nutrition and, and everything else. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mute and we're going to go ahead and start with our seniors. Um, Okay. All right, go ahead. All right. Hey, Veronica. Hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> my, my name is Veronica Yupati. I attend Leone High School, graduating this year, class of 2021. And um, I play softball during my senior year and, and soccer my whole life and um, thank you. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Amma. 
Um, I'm uh, I'm attending Leone High School. Um, graduating this year. Played softball my senior year, and soccer. Um, soccer and soccer is my favorite sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going with you guys. Okay, wait. Yeah. Can you hear us, coach? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Are you guys on mute? No. Okay. 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 Well, hey, greetings in Talafalava. My name is Tuipulawai. Um, I am currently attending Leone High School. Um, I am going to graduate this year, the class of 2021, and my favorite sport is softball. Hi, my name is Dilio Paul. I'm attending Leone High School, graduating this year, class of 2021. Um, my favorite sports are softball and basketball. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Alexis Naiso, hail from the beautiful village of Fama'alu, and um, I'm currently attending Samoan High School. I'm a senior, and I've been playing this sport, softball, for about, or ever since middle school. And yeah, it's basically the only sport, and it is my favorite sport. Okay, thank you. That's it. <laughs> okay, uh, Leo. Voice wait for me. Give me the earphone. Give me the earphone. You're unmuted. Oh. Hi, my name is Leah Ina Cassins. Um, I'm a junior at Leone and I'm going to be yeah, graduating next year. And I just started playing softball my freshman year. Um, I've been playing volleyball since I was in the second grade. And ever since I started playing softball, I fell in love with the sport. And that's now my favorite sport. So, yeah. uh, hi, my name is, no, don't try like that. Hi, my name is Esme Falanico. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a junior in high I'm a junior in high school. I'm a junior in high school, and my favorite sport is softball. Thank you. got some dead air <laughs> yes <laughs> kind of radio show is this <laughs> I think the guys don't want to speak they're too shy or what what's up boys one ksbs oh, <laughs> come on guys <laughs> who goes next get, get, this on. is that distraction we we're talking about <laughs> yeah right you good oh what's up man you, you guys hear me yeah we hear you what's up man Oh, my name is Marlo Tide. I'm a junior at Kafun High School. I've been playing baseball for six years. Um, yeah, baseball is my favorite sport. Uh, I play catcher, third base, shortstop, and more positions. Hey. Hello, coaches. All right, um, my name is Cyrus Lotelli. Um, 15, I attend to Safono High School, graduating class of 2023. Uh, I've been playing baseball for six years, and I still play. And favorite my favorite position is pitcher, shortstop, center field, and all the other positions. Yeah. Okay. Uh is, that, is that everyone? No, um, can you guys hear me? Is that uh, my name is, uh, can, you, can they hear me? Okay, my name is uh, Isley Samuelu. I'm from the village of Pong Pongo. And um, I'm, a, I'm currently a, a freshman in a college right now. 
uh, at ASCC, the community college here in American Samoa. Uh, I started playing baseball maybe in eighth grade uh, at one of the summer programs they held over here. And um, ever since then, I've been I've been uh, involved with the sport. I've been involved with uh, Saipai and uh, her family. And they, uh, they kind of really just took me in uh, and helped me develop the uh, my love, my passion for uh, this sport. And um, so I'm hoping to continue uh, playing. Obviously we couldn't do that here because of COVID. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Awesome. Hey um, guys, if you guys don't mind, I think that's everybody, right? Um, one more. One more. Okay. Yes. Uh, Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Kasson Sunken. I'm from the village of Bailoa. Uh, just like Isley, I'm also a freshman in college. I'm a graduate of Leone High School. Um, I fell in love with the game from since I was in third grade, playing in Hawaii, being exposed to that, that atmosphere up there. And eventually, when me and my family moved back home, my passion grew as well down here. And uh, my mom being the the leader of this little league thing uh, helped me help drive my passion to make an influence in the sport of baseball in American Samoa. So my, my hopes are to pursue this passion and love of mine. Of the game. Okay. Was that the last one? Okay. So let, let me let me uh, interject here real quick and then I'll point something out. Um, so Samuelu and uh, Paul, you guys were the last two, is that correct? Yes. Right, and you two are in college and they're in, uh, the rest of them are senior and a junior in high school, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so here is, I, I'm gonna, you know, uh, give a little bit of whatever advice just from listening to um, the uh, all the high school kids and the one thing that really stood out as I was listening to you guys introduce, introduce yourself is the level of confidence, right? The, the level of confidence and the way you speak really uh, impresses, give that first impression to people, right? So what really made it more significant for Samuelu and Paul, I believe, um, what really made it significant for them compared to everyone else that was in high school is that maturity level of how they speak, mm. right? And they spoke very good at, with confidence, right? Um, there was no giggling, there was no laughing or all kinds. I understand, totally understand the Samoan culture of how we like to joke around, right? That is. That's totally understandable. I love that about our culture. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's a place and a time for it. So my only advice for you um, high school kids uh, coming up, right? You guys, um, I hate to say boys and girls because you guys are not boys and girls no more. You're adults, you're, you're teenagers, right? You're going to go into that adulthood. So I advise you guys right now is to work on your confidence as far as how you speak. Because when you speak to people with confidence, you give them that impression of saying, wow, who is this person? I would like to know, or I would love to know who this person is. That's the biggest change coming from American Samoa and going into college or anyone in the US, right? Is that level of maturity. So my advice to you guys is try and I don't want to say grow up, right? Because you guys are still young. You guys are still in teenage. Live life to its fullest, right? But at the same time, too, time is not on your side. So you have to make those little changes, right? And can be just that right there, that level of confidence of how you talk, okay? And when you do, you know, speak, I also ask you guys, you know, if you're not talking, listen to that person, right? Listen to them, because that's the biggest thing that we have as human beings. We don't listen, right? Listen to that person, listen who is speaking, give them that respect or whatever, but work on that confidence, guys. It's gonna be the biggest thing 
no matter what you do, either in sports, either in school, no matter what you do in life, you got to have confidence within yourself in order for you to continue doing what you want to do, right? And project that confidence. There's a difference between confidence and being um, arrogant, right? There's a big difference, right? Confidence coming out saying, yes, this is who I am. I'm from American Samoa. I'm from this little island, but I'm here to do big things, right? That's confidence, like how I'm talking right now, right? Um, and you can also be humble too, doing the same, the same thing I'm doing, right? Projecting yourself with confidence and being humble, right? But work on those confidence, guys. That's my only thing uh, that I just want to bring that out because that's what I noticed as I was listening to you guys and made it a big difference between Samuelo and, and Paul between everybody else. All right. You guys get that? That's really, really good. Yeah, I appreciate you, Chris. Now remember, he's been there. He's done that, right? We were all the same. Um, so take heed, listen exactly what Chris said, try to adopt it, right? Own it and then become it. Not next week, not two years from now, next minute, right? The next moment, like right now, right? So, cause he's been there, he's done that. So take take his wise words and, um, and implement it. I understand that some of you have some questions that you guys wrote down that you might wanna ask uh, the guys, right? Yes. Yeah, um, go for it. I should go ahead and do us off. Um, being someone from The Rock, born and raised, we are fortunate to be to access uh, to have access to the internet and YouTube. So it's it's very easy for us to be able to look up plays, look up drills to help uh, accommodate our skills. But again, being someone who was born and raised in The Rock, what do I need to do in order to compete with the higher caliber of players in America? That's good. Uh, Mathis, so to repeat the question, um, what do the players in Samoa need to do to increase their level of uh, skill in order to compete with the best of the best here in America? Well, that's actually a really good question. And one of the things that uh, you, your generation has the advantage of is like you said, the internet, right? So in Samoa, it's you're limited on your facilities right because when you come stateside and you see what a high school facility looks like it, it will blow you away like our football stadiums are 15 20 30 million dollar stadiums our baseball fields are same thing soccer fields what happens here in the united states mainland is the fact that the facilities are what the players or the athletes look at. It's not so much the school itself, it's what the school has to offer. And that's the hard part now in the generations because I use different terminology because of my age. Like I said, I, I coached high school baseball here at a private school for 15 seasons. So the privileges of what those kids go through compared to what an ordinary student goes through, uh, it's, it's very uh, skewed. It's very skewed. Um, and and the, the advice that I give the kids that I coached at the high school level is something that you're not going to be able to reach at on the island because we have access to players coaching private private lessons facilities to do that kind of stuff you're going to have to reach into what your school has to offer as far as on your own time mm. because remember you're a student first right you're an athlete second and the way that I always talk to the kids is if you don't have the grades underneath your belt to go to the next level, your first and foremost thing you have to do is pass your classes, attend your classes. From there, when you're doing your workouts, it's after school that you're doing your workouts. Because during school, uh, 
I, I know that they took away PE programs and all that kind of stuff. So when you're off season, uh, baseball is a, is a spring sport. So during the fall season, you're doing what you can looking at those types of things on the internet to find out how do I, uh, you know, do I, do I have access to weight rooms? Do I have access to the track? Do I, the calisthenics that you do, that kind of stuff. Learning from the, the different hitting coaches that I've learned from, uh, great, great style of hitting. Uh, I'm a traditional hitter, uh, meaning that when you look at those kind of things on the internet, as a baseball hitter, you're either a front side hitter or you're a backside hitter. Traditional hitting is backside hitting, right? You pivot on your back foot, straight, straight line from your shoulder to your knee, and you, you, you rotate the hips, right? That's traditional hitting. So when you're doing that kind of stuff, you can go and take fungos. You can take uh, off the T. T work is crucial. But the problem is if you have a thousand swings you do a day and those thousand swings are wrong, you're compiling the problem. So until you learn to film yourself, that is another one that's great. We utilize, use your cell phones and set it up to where your cell phones can watch you while you're doing your hitting drills, while you're working through your throwing motions. What's the position of my arm? What's the rotation of my elbow? That kind of stuff. Your cell phone, a picture is a thousand words. And so those are the types of things and always have someone to work out with if you can, but you still can do workouts on your own. So that's my advice to you guys when you're, because like I said, once you get off island and you come stateside, it's a whole different distraction because there's more than just sports here, right? There's more than just the school. There's all kinds of stuff. So I recommend that kind of stuff if that answers your question. It does. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Anytime. Hey, so um, let me answer that one, too. Um, uh, Mathis had a really good uh, point on that one. But um, I'm piggybacking off of uh, what Ted uh, mentioned earlier, of what he did on his long walks, mm -hmm. right? Walking back from the, you know, wherever the field, going back to his, you, you know what Ted was doing at that time? Ted mentioned that he was doing this, right? So coming from a small island, you don't have that ability to compete against um, in the mainland because in the mainland, they have all these facilities like what Mathis said, right? So there is a big disadvantage there, right? Because it's all about the facilities. The, the, be the better the facilities, the more you can develop, right? But here's one thing that because coming down from a, a small island is this right here. You have to be really mentally strong, right? Did, uh, let me, so they did a study of like, um, of how, um, you know, I think it was a um, shooting basketball. So, you know, a group, there was two groups. One group never, um, you know, practiced shooting basketball. All they did was just thought about it. They thought about it in their, in their mind. And then um, there was another group too, you know, they did something else, whatever. But when it when it uh, it came time for them to actually go out and shoot the basketball, the one who actually the group that actually did made made the most shots were the ones that actually mentally, you know, thought of themselves shooting that basketball. Everything from like whatever technique it was, right? So take that concept right there. Same thing as you know, you guys are coming down from American Samoa. It's all mental. Right, because you're gonna come up and like you know, Matt has said, you're gonna be able to like you're gonna be in awe because these stadiums and and these facilities and these players are so good. You're gonna be like, oh man, I can't compete with these guys. Yes, you can, because it all starts here, right? So that's one place where you guys can actually start is right here, getting yourself mentally prepared, like what Ted does. Do those walks if you have to. You know, people do awkward things just to get them mentally prepared. Uh, you just have to find what yours is, right? So that's one thing I think that you guys have, can focus on to get a little bit more advantage. Um, so once you guys come up to, you know, 
to the U.S. to start playing. I mean, even Francis, Francis probably can uh, attest to that, right? I mean, being in that level, I'm pretty sure Francis had to, you know, mentally, you know, doing all those, you know, pitching and all that. I mean, he competed against, you know, really, really good players. So it was all about this too. It wasn't not only your talent at that at that level, and at that level where Francis was at was here, you know. So, yeah, that's what I would say. So let, yeah. let me add okay. one more point. Um, if you guys would uh, write down some of the stuff that we tell you, so you can look it up. So in 1988, I played for the Los Los Angeles Dodgers. And when I went to winter ball with the Dodgers, they brought in a motivational speaker. His name is Tony Robbins. Now you can find him on the internet. He's been around for a long time. And what he did was he came in, like Chris was saying, and we had just one day where he came in for about four hours and did visual maintenance on our brains and we forgot all about the physical part we only focused on the mental part and because of the way that the drills that he had us do mentally at the end of it and trust me when I tell you the coaches they were not prepared for what Tony had us do but because we were being paid athletes and one of the things at the very end of our thing was we mentally went into how would we break a, a board with a karate hit. Now, none of us really knew karate, but because he walked us through it mentally, at the end of the exercise, we all stood there. There was 175 guys and uh, we all broke a board and the coaches went ballistic because they thought we were going to get hurt. And, uh, but that's, that's the type of stuff mentally that we prepared ourselves, walked through the exercise and it was great. It was a, a great mental exercise. So if you can find Tony Robbins on the internet, maybe a podcast, or maybe you can read one of his, uh, uh, iBooks that's out there. His story is unbelievable and he's a great motivational speaker. So I would recommend it. that's a good read for you guys on your downtime. That's all. Thank you, Coach. I like that. Um, I'm going to chime in here real fast. The strength of your mind, right? The strength of your mind will determine the strength of your moves. And that applies to all of life, right? The strength of your mind will determine the strength of your moves. Uh, what I mean by that is, and the guys can attest to this, they can remember and they can actually tell you right now, uh, certain moments in certain games, uh, the, the time of the day, who was pitching the first last name, what pitch they, you know, they sent out, uh, how they hit right. They can remember every detail because their mind was ready for it. They were, that, they were that dialed in. So what does all that look like? If you think about the mind and how pliable it is, you'll recognize that your education <laughs> is the weights that you're lifting to strengthen your mind. The math that you do right? You're grappling with math. You're grappling with English. That's the weight, right? So if you do your weights, you get stronger. If you do your homework, you get smarter. So the smarter you are, the easier it is for you to be locked in to your baseball, to your softball, right? Ted's a smart kid, honor society. So when he was walking home, his mind was ready to recall what he went through, right? So don't discount education. The more educate, the more you read, the stronger your mind becomes, the better baseball player you become. Uh, so that's what it looks like in real life, right? Okay, so we're gonna strengthen our mind. What does that look like? Read a book, dude. <laughs> do your math, right? Do your English, your history, because when you don't do that, your muscle is not working out, your mind's not working out. Therefore, when you go to play the game, right? If you lose or whatever, they ask you, hey, what did you strike out on what pit? I don't remember. That's because your brain's not ready, right? Uh, Francis can tell you, as a pitcher, as a catcher, he knows everybody that's coming up as a batter and what the pitcher can do best to get that guy out because they got that guy out three weeks ago because he studied the thing, 
because his mind was prepared, right? It's all there. So that's what it looks like in real life. Um, from what Mathis and Chris said, it's all about the mind. How do you apply it? Do your work. <laughs> Read a book. Do some math, right? Train your mind. Listen to Tony Robbins. Listen to Deepak Chopra or listen to the whoever. Get your mind engaged, right? And then you'll be able to. Don't worry about the, the drills and all that stuff. One thing we know is you guys are athletic. You'll be fine. As long as you do physical activity every day and intellectual activity every day, you'll be fine. And then when you get to the States, you'll just enhance it to that level because you'll be prepared, right? You don't have to kind of catch up and try to wait. What does that word mean again? I, I, I forgot, I don't know, I don't, I don't own that car, you know, whatever, right? So yeah, train your mind and train your, 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 your body. Uh, Murph is chiming in here, so let me, um, Let's go to the next question, and I think I want to see what's up with Murphy. Um, I think I'll go next with the question. Oh, uh, so my question is, uh, like what Paul said, of all of us uh, being here for the Rock, where do we need to be in terms of uh, in terms of wealth? Uh, because a lot of us are either in high school or fresh out of high school, you know where all of us are still in school, so we don't have a lot of time to do, um, to have a job. Um, so to seize an opportunity that you guys, uh, that you guys were blessed with, where do we need to be in terms of wealth uh, to be able to come out to the States and, and uh, showcase our, our talent? So that's more on the logistical side. Um, to answer that question directly, we're working on a plan. And what does that plan look like? That means for you guys on this call right now, we're going to look for opportunities to where you can develop as a player, as an athlete. And then obviously while you're here, we'll figure out ways that you can earn on the side. Um, so that's in the works. But then on the bigger picture, uh, we'll also start working on ways to develop the 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds, so that when they get to your age, they already have offers for baseball and education, right? So we're, we're right smack dab in the middle of working on a plan for you guys that are graduated and then you guys that are about to get graduated uh, next year. Um, so that's still happening, right? But um, there's something that we're, yeah, it's, it's in the work, absolutely. But do your math awesome. and do your homework. <laughs> Thank you for that, guys. Um, so I have them. Um, we were trying to organize a little better so that way we're not um, all over the place. So I had each of them write down a question so that we're not being repetitive. Um, so one of the questions here that the um, that the athletes were asking was, "Do you recommend uh, junior college first? before even thinking about playing at the D1 level? Francis, do you wanna share a little bit about your, your experience um, on that? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, JUCO was, uh, I think it's a really good option. Um, I was fortunate enough to get drafted out of high school as a draft and follow. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jason Vavao's story. He was uh, taken um, by Cincinnati. Um, we actually got drafted by the same scout, uh, Rex. But anyways, um, I was uh, still under the Reds' uh, rights when I when I played at JUCO. So after my freshman season at JUCO, um, I did pretty good. And then I had an option to either sign the contract to Cincinnati or play another year. So, you know, it, it kind of gave me a more time to figure out what I wanted to do. Did I want to go to a university or uh, play another year, re-enter the draft or sign right then and there? So I knew my draft stock had gotten up because I had a pretty good year. So I decided to stay in JUCO another year. So that's what JUCO did for me. It gives you an option to, because I believe at a uh, university, if you sign with a university, you, have, you can 
you have to stay there three years before you get you uh, be able to sign. So, um, also, I think the talent at, at JUCO is not, you know, D1, I know they got the best from around the nation. So, you know, if you think of it that way, you know, it, it could be difficult to just jump right in and, and start. JUCO, I think, you know, you have, you know, local guys around your city, um, but you still get scouts that come to these games. And what I did too is coming out of high school, uh, it also gave Pittsburgh an opportunity to see me play. So if I didn't go to JUCO, you know, Pittsburgh wouldn't have seen me. If I went to D1, I'd probably sit another year. Who knows if, you know, I lost interest. So I think it's a real good option. But, you know, if you guys are ever in that situation, you just got to look at, you know, everything around you, you know, and make the best decision as to, you know, how far you want to go, what that school has to offer, and, uh, you know, go from there. But, yeah, I think it's a uh, JUCO was a really good option for me. Can I piggyback on that? Uh, I, I, was, I was in the same boat uh, somewhat. Uh, I ended up going to junior college for two years. Um, I was, uh, and what that does, especially in the state, especially in California, California, when I played in JUCO, my my district or my my uh, my league that I played in in San Diego, uh, we had sixteen junior colleges that we competed against. So nowadays, it's even doubled that. So the number of JUCOs that are available versus number the number of D one or universities that are available, it's probably triple. So your opportunities to go there at a JUCO level are, are much more vast. And like, like we were saying, it's, it's not the cream of the crop, but it gives you the opportunity to play and be exposed. That's all. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your answer. I think uh, more specifically for you guys, uh, development is key. So if you're sitting on the bench, what are you developing? <laughs> right? Nothing <laughs> but your bench skills and your ability to eat seeds. So uh, when you think about JUCO, you're less likely to sit on the bench, right? So you'll have more opportunities and more options. Now, remember, when, when you're in JUCO, you're going to be looked at by two different people professional scouts and university scouts, right? So you have more options. Uh, for you guys right now, specifically, you need to develop because uh, playing six games a year and practicing, you know, once every month won't, won't do it, you know, won't do it. It's not gonna get you to a big school, even the lower level schools, it's not gonna happen, right? Because you're competing against guys that are that playing a hundred games a week or a month or whatever, right? So for you, set your minds on wherever you can develop and have options for these guys to look at you. If that, if that means JUCO, great. Or if it means a D3 where you get playing time, then those are your options. Or an NAIA school, right? Uh, really think about where you're going to develop so that you get the eyeballs and then kind of grow from there. Uh, think of it in terms of two-year tranches, right? So two-year JUCO or two-year NAIA, and then you can, you know, whatever. Uh, but think about it in those kind of, you know, little pockets, right? You've got two years for the next step and then another two years for the next step. Good question. Same, same for the girls too. Softball, same thing. Yeah, same thing, you need more options and eyeballs. What's your next question? Okay, awesome. Um, girls, did any of you have uh, an additional question? So most of the questions that were written down were basically about that. Um, whether, uh, like how Paul said, what do we need to do to, to de develop? Uh, would you prefer us um, attending a JUCO um, or D2 instead of going to D1? And, and we always say that we agree because 
um, they need development. That they're not, they're, there is a lot of things, they're talented, but they, they need development. They need that discipline. And, and uh, JUCO and D2 will do that to you. Uh, and so again, um, a lot of the questions that were in here were um, kind of what the same, the same um, for everybody. But I just wanted to double check, did anybody else have a, an additional question? Please, Maru, Sue, anybody? Do you guys have an additional question? No, everyone's good? Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was, again, we were trying to make sure that we weren't repetitive, but I think those are the two main questions. And I think, I think I speak for all our athletes here is what is, they really want to know realistically, can they play at the next level? And what do we need to do to get there? And Chris, Chris said it, your mental skills need to develop. And that's, if we start from there, everything else falls in place because they're just natural athletes. Samoan kids are just natural athletes. And one of the things that we do here with our organization, um, the community empowerment organization is we do tutoring. Um, for, for, for anybody that just wants to tutor, we, we just help them tutor. We just tutor and we help them develop um, the skill sets that they need in regards to, uh, like you were saying, the mind game. <clears throat> and it's funny because, uh, again, Chris brought up a great point because that was the one thing that we noticed when we were going around the room was that, uh, you know, again, um, just having that self-confidence, like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm so-and-so from American Samoa, I'm an athlete, pick me. And, and so it's funny because we, we had this conversation right before we got on call. Uh, we went around the room and had each of them introduce themselves so they could prep for that. And then they got nervous in front of everybody and uh, kind of giggled at it. But we, we use the term, um, we, we use the water bottle as an example. So uh, we had a, a Niagara water bottle in front of us and, uh, and we talked about, okay, you go to the store and you see all these different Niagara bottles and uh, you, that, you can pick any Niagara bottle because they're all the same. They're all going to taste the same. But if there's a Fiji bottle in there, you know that the quality from the Fiji bottle and the water from the Fiji bottle tastes better. And you're, you're willing to spend a little bit more money to not get the plastic taste in the Fiji bottle. <laughs> so one of the things is making sure you stand out and that you're a quality athlete all around, built all around. You can't just come out here and be like, look, I'm the best but I can't tell you, uh, you know, again, what my grades are. So, um, you know, we're, we're really trying to help develop all around athletes. That, that's, that's what we want. And uh, what, they, what they're asking, what they're wondering is, is it realistic for them? And, and, and I think after being on this call, after each and every one of you went across and, and spoke, about being from here and, and where you went and uh, being Samoan, I think that's very inspirational for all of us um, because it does give them hope. There has not been hope for any other uh, sport other than football here for quite some time. And so everyone, all these athletes here just wanna know realistically, can I play at the next level? And, and uh, it starts with connections from you guys and it starts with the mind. So I, again, appreciate all of you guys input everyone's um, recommendations um, <clears throat> and uh, just moving forward. I, I'm just so glad that, that we get to work together. That's good, appreciate that. Um, to answer the question. Uh, Hell yeah, it's realistic. Yeah. <laughs> think, think about this, 20 plus years ago, we were on the island doing yep. what you're doing. When our internet, wait, what internet, right? Oh, internet. We didn't have internet. Exactly. <laughs> um, but we went out and played ball because we love it. We wanted to improve because we loved it, right? What kids lack these days is passion. So you, you find that passion, 
that passion to, to play the game in your head, to play the game on the field, and then just to get better every day. You got to be better than the guy you were yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And, that, and that's, that goes through not just your athletics, but school, how you are at home. You know what I mean? Doing your chores. Are you a good son? All that stuff all plays into it, right? Building that mental game. But if we could do it with the tools that you guys have nowadays, like if we went back 20 years with all the stuff you had, you know, it's how much more better would we have been? You know what I mean? You guys have all the tools, but the biggest tool that you have that everyone has is that mind of yours. And you have to sharpen that and you got to build that up, you know, in your mind and body, they go the same. You're going to build your mind. You got to build your body. You got to eat right. You got to exercise right. And uh, just try to improve on a daily basis. My goal was really, <clears throat> I didn't, my goal wasn't to play professional sports. My goal was to see, can I get better? Can I compete? I love to compete. It, it, even when I play with my, my nieces and nephews at the little games we have, I want to win, you know, no matter what it is. Uh, that's just the competitiveness that I have in me. And that's what you're going to need. Uh, and that's what the grind is. You know, it's, it's competitive out there. And you got to be more competitive than the opposition, right? You got to get out there and you got to – let me tell you a story. Uh, when I was playing <clears throat> semi-pro ball – you know, I was a pitcher, and they're still trying to find out who their starting four was going to be. So in the rotation, I was middle relief. And in the first six games, they kept putting me in terrible situations. Bases loaded, right? And they put me in. I get us out of the inning, but unfortunately, the runs, they don't count against me. They count against the other pitcher, but they look at it as if it was my fault. So mind you, that happened in multiple games. And they're like, you know what? It's your turn to start. This is your last chance. If you don't do well in this game, I'm sorry, we're sending you home. And that's how it is in the real world, right? You don't, you get that last chance and it's uh, all right, see ya, it's just business. So what did we do? We went back to our roots, Rob and I and the guys, we went outside and we threw the ball around like we normally do. We practiced, we did extra stuff on the side to prep mentally, prep physically. And the day I got my start, I was sick as a dog. Literally, I had a, a cold or a flu and I was feverish, but I had to pitch. That was my last chance. I get out there and I had the greatest game of my life. They clocked me on the speedometer. I was doing, what, 95 was my, my top pitch that day. And I was sick as a dog. I, I had seven strikeouts, you know, maybe more, in five innings. They passed the hat around the stadium. They got more money for me. And then they took me out and said, great job. You're going to be our starter. And I went from then. From then on, I, I ended up, I only lost one game. I won 11 games and lost one. And it took MVP. So that competitiveness in me drove me to do what I always do. Go out and practice harder and compete. We played against major leaguers out there and we competed. And for a guy from the Rock, let me tell you, that was better than playing on the professional team was beating somebody who played on the, in the show. So can you guys make it? Hell yeah. But you got to want it. Right. right? Yeah. Like Ted said, he did stuff daily. So I don't oh. want to underestimate what daily means, right? There's no day off. There's absolutely no day off, especially if you're young, right? do extra work on your learning here, do extra, even visualizing your hits, ground balls, playing with the shadow. There's gotta be work that's happening every single day, both mentally and physically, right? If you're not doing it, there's these palangis up here that are doing it three times more than you are, right? So if you think you're gonna come and take their spot, guess again, right? So that's the mentality you need to have because we don't have that luxury. Right, so do whatever you can, right? If it's climbing the coconut tree just so you, your grip is better, climb it. <laughs> you know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Uh, thank you, coach. I just wanna say, I think I speak uh, uh, 
on everyone here that uh, sharing you guys' personal experience, uh, helping us visualize what you guys went through. It kind of helped uh, uh, remove any self-doubt, any unease, because again, coming from the rock and trying to make it big time in America, that's, that's a huge fear factor. And the way you guys explain it, I just want to, on behalf of everyone here, just that we really appreciate it. We, we really thank you for reaching out to us, uh, taking the time out to share these experiences, help us visualize, help us visualize us in your shoes or making our own path into, into uh, major leagues or whatever we, we choose to, to uh, pursue. So thank you. Good job, Paul. Good job, Paul. <laughs> Any last words from our panel guests? <laughs> Duke? <laughs> no, um, I, I have something to say. Just, just as you go through your journey, right, um, understand who you are. Uh, we've all been talking about it. Be very truthful about your progress, right? Be very self-aware. Um, you're going to do your best, but then you're going to look to your left and your right. You have probably done your best and there's going to come a time where you may realize that this is it, you know, like I'm going to have to, you know, uh, go another path that God has made me, but baseball has been that path. Right. And, and that's just kind of been my path. Right. Uh, I've come to the end of my baseball career, like right at, shortly after college. And, it, and, you know, I realized, Hey, there's a fork in the road that I've got to take. But did I do my best? Yes. It's just, you know, I came to the realization that, you know, baseball wasn't for me anymore, right? But what you guys right now are doing in your lives right now is you guys are trying to, trying to use baseball as that avenue to get you to that next step. But do your best, right? Do your best. Be very honest about where you are at. Don't lie about your workouts and all this other stuff. And like what these guys are saying, put the work in. You just, you got to put the work in. There's no other way. There's a life is about struggle and your job is to go through that struggle. Right. And if you don't test yourself and if you don't go through those struggles, you will never know how good you are. Uh, and so yeah, that's all I have to say, Rob. That's good. Appreciate you. Hey, let me, let me say one more, one more thing. So I know we've been all talking about baseball and stuff, and I've been looking around and I see a lot of uh, uh, quite a few girls in here. Uh, let me just talk to you girls. And, you know, this is, you know, coming from what, you know, maybe what these other guys have experienced that, you know, for you girls, when you guys come to the next um, up here and play, um, I know everybody has been talking about baseball, or whatever, but, what I really want to let you guys know, the girls, you guys have no idea how competitive girls are it, up here in the US. These girls will scratch whatever. They're more competitive than guys. You know, so when you guys, you guys really have to come up here with a lot of confidence. And even though that that girl is better than you, don't let that intimidate you, you know? Um, so just be prepared and get yourself mentally prepared coming up here and knowing that you got to fight, you know, because these guys, like I said, these girls are so much more competitive than the guys when it comes to sports, especially when it comes to sports, because they're always trying to prove that they can do better than the guys, right? It's just natural because that's, you know, it's human you know, between female and, and male, whatever, right? But just be prepared to be that much more competitive, all right? And so I'm just speaking to the girls right now. Um, so, you know, just to get you guys ready mentally and know what the expectation is. Um, but yeah, I, you know, like what Ted said, you know, you guys have that question of like, can you guys do it? For you girls, hell yeah, you guys can do it. You know, you guys can do it. Um, there should be no doubt in it that you guys, you know, you know, maybe you guys can succeed or not. It's always, yes, I will succeed. All right. So that's all I got to say. That's good. That's good.
We appreciate you, Chris. Yeah, our experiences can be applied to you girls as well. All right, so don't just think it's just baseball. Our experiences is it goes for any athlete out there. Um, so don't think we're just speaking to the baseball guys. This is speaking to anyone who wants to take something they're passion, passionate about and, and take it as far as they can. You know, ride that 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 feeling all the way as far as you can. You know what I mean? Until to your body and your mind says, okay, I've reached my limit. You know, people like Mathis don't know when to stop, though. They just keep going. <laughs> but uh, it, it was, I got to say, it was great seeing you guys. Uh, being on this call tells me you guys have passion. Tells me that you guys, you know, want to do it. And uh, now all you got to do is show us that you can do it, right? So we want to see you out there, you know, grinding away. And uh, I'd like to thank Rob, too, for setting this up and SciPy for your efforts down there. <clears throat> um, let this not be the last call, right? Now that we've got the introductions out of the way, we can just go straight into, you know, more Q&As later. You know, we'll have more time to talk about, you know, stuff that you want to work on or advice and stuff like that. This is a great, uh, you know, beginning. You know, let's not make it an end and keep it going as, as, you know, as we become available for you guys. Yeah, yeah, totally. And if, uh, right, right after we end, if I can have the Psalm 1 kids uh, stick around for a real quick uh, minute, because um, I did get a message from Murph. So I want to, um, uh, specific details on what's next, right? Um, did you want to um, share some, some stuff to end us off, uh, Francis? Yeah, hey, thanks for having me on the call. It's good to see you guys. Uh, uh, Duke, I see Duke at church sometimes, so, you know, he's local. You know, Duke go to church. I haven't seen you in a while, though. <laughs> Say, what's up, Oos? COVID, Oos, it's COVID. I'm going to blame it on the COVID, Oos. COVID and, and, and NFL season. Yeah, right. No, but um, so all these uh, aspirations to, to make it, but hell yeah, you can make it just like, Ted said, um, there's always something you can do, though. Um, when I watch baseball games on TV, I'm still, I do this today. I stand in front of the TV and I just stand in. And I'm, I'm guessing, you know, what pitch is coming, who's, uh, and catching wise, uh, you know, if I see a pitcher, I'm wondering, you know, um, what's working that day for him, who I got in the bullpen, who's ready, who's on deck, who's after that. You know, think about these things. The mental game, it, it, it could take you, talent only take you, you know, so far. But if you prep for it, every, 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 everywhere I went, baseball was always on my mind. Mm. You know, it's like uh, going to the store, you know, like, damn, I should have hit that 2-2 two -two pitch. You know what I mean? Something like that's in my head all the time. You know, no matter what, what I do. So there's always something you can do. Before the game started, I was over there, um, you know, standing in while the pitcher was warming up just to get my timing down, you know, little, little things like that. So, uh, stay, stay in the game, keep your, keep your mind sharp, learn off, you know, whoever's your favorite player, you know, nitpick off of what they have. I, I took the, the players around me that I played, like, I never told them that they were better than me, even if they were, but I took a, a little bit of what they had and I just applied it to my game. You know, and that made me take a little bit of that. Like, All right, that's cool. So I'll take that and I'll use it. I'll take it in BP and I'll try it. Experiment, you know, uh, you know, learn off of failure. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, so that got me a long way. And, you know, just have fun. Baseball's a game. So remember to keep that in mind, too. But thanks for having me, Rob. Appreciate it. Amen, dude. Uh, you, you may want to connect with Mathis because he's big time in rugby too. Yeah, yeah, he's doing some rugby stuff. So um, that way you get your kids involved and all that. That's that you guys can kind of pick it up. Yeah, off we'll that. That. <laughs> awesome. Come, come to Houston. Come to Houston. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, I did want to mention to the girls, um, 
as a resource. Uh, hopefully, you know who she is because the island is pretty small. But my sister, uh, she's a year older than me. The, the the guys on this call all know her because. Uh, but Adelina Coffin. I don't remember the name of the school that she's at, but I know that they're red and it starts with an M and it's by Utile. So it's an elementary school. Not the Powell. But she, what is it? It might be Matafau. Yeah, it's Matafau. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Okay. So she was a, she would be a good resource for you girls about softball, about basketball, about opportunities. She played five, uh, five years at the University of Wyoming as a freshman and she got her master's degree. So she played basketball, she played softball and she played volleyball at the University of Wyoming. Uh, she might be able to help you understand what it's gonna take from your point of view, right? And she's a resource that's on island that you can contact and, and just pick her brain about her point of view as being a student athlete coming from the island out to the United States, right? So I'm just throwing that out there as a resource that's nearby. So I hope that uh, you have the courage to at least ask the question, even if it's going through somebody else, right? Send her an email. That's a, that's a good way to get through to any of you. Because I know uh, she's on the uh, internet all the time with school. So if you can get a hold of her, her school email, send her an email and tell her that, uh, tell her that, uh, Hey, your brother, I just talked to your brother and he said to contact you because I will whoop on her. I'm not scared. You know what I mean? But I'm in Houston and she's in Samoa. So I'm just telling you, <laughs> I'm a little bit of ways away, <laughs> but it was great to be here, Rob. Thank you for reaching out. Fellas, it's always good to see all my, my, my South Pacific game, game boys. And uh, of course, all my student athletes that are here right now, I, I'm, looking very forward to seeing what your future has in front of you. So thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Peace. Um, hey, uh, Samuel, do you want to take us out, man? Uh, pray us out, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, everybody close your eyes. I had Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for taking us and guiding us. Lord, Lord, we ask that you please forgive us for the sins we may have committed and we forgive those who may have committed against us. Lord, we ask that you uh, please bless and guide us throughout the rest of tonight, that we may uh, go home and find ways to seize a, a good opportunity, Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Thank you. Guys.